Sides, the American Express halftime report, Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, and our special guest here for our halftime report is Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA. It's good to see you, as always. Thanks for having me. Let, let me join in with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> what does this day mean for you? What, what feeling do you get? And I know you were in the... Uh, the arena in Atlanta today to watch some magic in the Hawks, but uh, the way the league embraces this day? Uh, it's always been a special day, as you guys know. In the NBA, we have 11 games today, but not just that. All 30 teams activate around MLK Day in their communities. We have everything from clinics to tournaments to essay contests, museum visits, social activities around junior NBA in the communities. And, and you know, I think what Dr. King's message embodies, I think, so much of what this league is about. And I, I, I always love that through line. That you and I have talked about, about this in the past, that Bill Russell stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in August 1963 when that very I Have a Dream speech was delivered. And it's wonderful to walk out. You know, as you said, I was over at the State Farm Arena for the Hawks game to see the players on their shooting shirts. Mm. You know, and it says Dream on the front, and then the back of the shirts have the first few lines from the actual speech. Yeah. And how important has it been for you uh, as you look at uh, players being socially aware, players not being afraid to speak out, and continuing that thread from Bill Russell? I, I think it's critically important. And, and what I always point out is that began long before me. It was part of these guys' generation when they were on the floor. It was part of Bill Russell. It was part of Bob Cousy. It was part of even players that came before them. And I think even more so in now with all that's going on in our country and globally, with 25% of our players coming from outside the United States, I always feel it's part of Americana that we export to the world. Those uniquely American values, that First Amendment, that freedom of speech. And I think it's, I'm thrilled at the fact that players in this league are comfortable speaking out on issues that are important to them. And, and as I say, I think, and these guys know, it, it's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, it's, it's for those players. I'm not saying you should be speaking on political matters if you're not comfortable doing that. But if you are, and by the way, I also think it's great that they engage on all kinds of activities in society. They talk about music. They talk about fashion. I mean, they have this platform to show people they're truly multidimensional. They're not just ball players. You know, Commissioner, you look at the last uh, election, see how many women were elected to Congress. The NBA's made some inroads as far as hires, hiring women. When do you think Kamala Harris announced it today? She yes, yes. Um, Remember, she was at our All-Star yeah, Game in L.A. Game speaking. In LA? Yeah. Yep. Remember when I was asking a question? Well, you can finish it. <laughs> okay. We just, we just had a, just a moment. <laughs> I apologize. You, you know, we see a lot of NBA teams hiring women. Obviously, uh, Becky down in San Antonio. When do you think we're going to get to the point where we have a woman who has in control of a team as a general manager or a coach? Well, I begin, we actually have two women who have control of a team right now. You have Gail Benson in New Orleans, and you, you of course, have Jeannie Buss in Los Angeles. So you actually have two women who have full control over yeah. franchises. I think, to your point, in terms of general managers, it's happening, and it's going to be uh, an evolution, or it, it will continue to evolve in this league. You have more and more women, as you guys have pointed out, working in front offices in the league. And I think it's an area where as much credit as we get for being ahead in certain areas, I'll, I acknowledge we're behind. I mean, in positions, whether it's refereeing, whether it's coaching, whether it's being a general manager, there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have more women in those jobs. I think it's been part of the history of Major League Sports, and we were allowed, I think, to, on one hand, do incredible things in communities and, and, and show, represent those principles that Dr. King talked about. But then when it came to women in front office positions, somehow it just wasn't part of the culture of that league. And I think that's something we're all working to change very quickly. I don't have a question, but I would like to take this time to, to commend you. You know, we all played under uh, the great David Stern. I know he was your mentor for many years, but ever since you have taken control of the ship, you've always done the right thing, whether it comes socially or politically. So I just want to take this time to say thank you for doing a wonderful job and, you know, letting the players be who they are rather than, you know, having control. You're doing a great job. I appreciate I, yeah, it. Yeah, I'll echo that. Thank you. Thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, I'll echo that and kind of piggyback off of that because mine is more of a commentary as well as a, <coughs> a, a, a question that you could kind of fill in on. I just always felt in, on Mount Luther King Day, we talk about civil rights being, you know, in the 60s, it was really about the simplicity, civil rights. Simple things of, that mattered. You know, not being judged by the color of your skin. Simple simple thought process that was not simple. Then we, I think we moved into a complexity of like being business and business owners. And then realizing now that we are back to the simplicities. 
about civil rights, about police brutality, possibly, and all of the things that go on now. And, and as a league, how are we embracing the simplicities and how are we embracing the complexities because they're happening at the same time? It's, it's a great point. And I think and, and the first principles mm -hmm. go to human rights. And I think that's something we're increasingly talking about in this league. And whether it's African Americans, whether it's women, whether it's the LGBT community, uh, you know, that, that we focused on in North Carolina, I think it's, again, it, when you look back at the values that were created around from the big early days of this league, again, from Bill Russell standing there with Dr. King, I think that those values, you know, while they're simple principles, in real life they are complex. And I realize that we live in a divided society, and by no means, I think, as a league, should we be necessarily lecturing people. We have to listen to other people's points of views. I think that's important. And look for opportunities to bring people together. I mean, one of the things that the Hawks right down the street talk about is building bridges through basketball. And I think, I, I, I think it's very important that while we, we point out when we see injustice, that, again, it's not the league saying necessarily that we're here to lecture you and tell you the right way to do things. I do think we have to listen and, again, find commonality through sports. That's what's so incredible. I mean, all of us travel the world with this game. You guys, and you know, we've been, I just got back from Europe last week. I was in Africa over the summer. I was in China in October. And these are universal human values. And, and what's so special about sports, and I think maybe was, is unique to basketball because we're a global sport, we can use this as a platform to bring people together. They won't take a break, but we're not taking a break. So listen, are you concerned about the poaching aspect of the NBA with the super teams now? The chat has already started on Kawhi Leonard, where he's going next year from a smaller market. You got... Anthony Davis, same situation. It's going to start next year with Giannis. Are you concerned about the big picture of that in the NBA, just having one or two super teams, and we're just going to keep poaching superstars from smaller markets? I'm, I'm absolutely concerned. I think then the issue is how can we address it? I mean, we, as a policy matter, when players are talking to players, and you guys can speak to this, I think it would be pointless to try to police what one um, player is saying to another. I, I think players are going to have their own conversations. And the reason a different rule applies to players and teams is that players don't have control. The teams do. Um, on the other hand, that if we thought that teams were working in unison with players to try to recruit players, other players, that would be a problem. But in the day and age of social media, I recognize part of the appeal of this league is that it's 24-7, that people love the chatter, they love the narratives around teams, they love the narratives around players moving, and it's part of this community, that people are endlessly going to talk about those things. I think what's most important, I think we're also seeing in the league, despite that kind of chatter, that, that there's, there's been an equalization among franchises in that it doesn't really matter what market you're in anymore, that you can be a global star, whether you're in Oklahoma City or whether you're in Los Angeles or whether you're in Indiana. What's, what matters is how the team performs. So I, I think that counters that narrative to a certain extent. And there may be things we have to look at when we sit down with the players again, because the players all want to be in a league where everybody has an opportunity to win too. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I am concerned, but I think it's something that we can solve, but we got to continue to talk about. It. Commissioner, we would love to have you back another time where we can have even more time to talk about things on the floor. But uh, thank you very much for joining us on Thanks, this. Thanks, Ernie. Thanks, all of you. Yes, well, thank day you. With the yeah, 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 yeah. Africa!